Robert and Dean truly loved each other. They were like brothers, as far as I'm concerned. It takes years to build a friendship, but only moments to tear one apart. This murder was very gruesome. Probably one of the bloodiest that I've seen. He said, Winston, I'm gonna kill him and cut him up in pieces and distribute it to him out all over the state of Wisconsin. There is one person dead, one person in prison, and the person that's responsible for the whole thing beginning is free. I was a detective with Marathon County Sheriff's Department in Wisconsin, and my partner and I came to Texas in pursuit of the man that murdered his best friend in Wisconsin. The victim and the perpetrator were best friends for many, many years. We attempted to locate the suspect's home. And while we were looking for his home, a call came over the portable radio that our other officers had him in custody. The hardest part of this case was not being able to locate the body. We sort of kept tabs on each other. We always knew where the other one was even when one of us was dead in the ground. To this day, I am still in absolute shock about what happened between Robert and Dean. I mean, it just, it amazes me that something tragic happened in this relationship because I never saw it. There was no indication to me whatsoever that their friendship would end like this. That's sure not the way it started. In the beginning, I was just a carpenter. It's in my blood. My daddy was a carpenter too. When he left us, I dropped out of school to provide for my family. And I hoped it'd be the last time I'd follow in his footsteps. Dean, to me, was the type of person that every mother would like to have. He was very charming. He was a nice-looking, clean-cut young man. And he was just friends with everybody he met. He was just an overall good person. Dean, he was a very nice-looking man. He was clean-cut all the time. He held the job down. He was just basically a good person. He was friendly, caring. You couldn't ask for a better person. I was Dean's aunt, but we were born so close together, you know, like eight or nine months apart. So we were kind of raised like brothers and sister. Growing up, Dean was easygoing and liked to have a lot of fun. And at times, he was mischievous. <laughs> liked to get into things a lot. We'd go to the movies, and we'd go to the game room a lot, to the arcade. They call Nacogdoches the oldest town in Texas. But at times, it seemed like the dullest town in Texas. As a rule, life was as flat as the prairie. Then someone came along who didn't play by the rules. Let's just say I had my own rules. Because I figure you only live once. My daddy was the preacher in the family. I was more pagan than pious. I'm a butcher by trade. Always liked the freedom it gave me. And every town needs a meat slicer, whether it's back home in Wisconsin or deep in the heart of Texas. 
Robert was from Wisconsin, and anytime someone moves from another state to Texas, most people notice it because of the difference in their demeanor. And to me, Robert stood out because he had the long, shaggy hair, and people were, you know, really noticing that because at that time, most people didn't wear their hair long. So you could tell that he, you know, wasn't really from around here. Of course, being a butcher, I always had an eye for fresh meat. Robert was, I would say, a little bit rougher than what Dean was. He was smoking a little dope at different times, and uh, he was just kind of, I wouldn't say strung out or anything like that, but he, uh, he was just a total different person than what Dean was. But he also just had a real charm about him. He was easy to talk to, smiled all the time. I don't ever even remember seeing Robert down about anything. Dean and Robert first met at Tardy Tom's arcade game room. You know, had billiards and pinball and all that good stuff. After I hooked up with Robert, life was a lot more interesting. He had that long hair, that Yankee accent, and all these stories about life up north in Wisconsin. About what the rest of the world looked like. Dean was a few years younger, so he probably looked up to me some. Life back then was simple, like one of those arcade games. I mean, we were just hanging out and having fun. As far as I can recall with Robert and Dean, I never saw them ever even get into a spat. I mean, it just seemed like they just clicked. But I think that it says a lot also for Robert and Dean, because the fact is I never saw either one of them argue with anyone. Both of them were very charming, but in their own ways. Robert had more of an outgoing personality. Dean was the more stable person, but they really complemented each other. So they were a force to be reckoned with as a team. I went over to Dean's house all the time. The door was always open, and I liked his family. Well, I really liked his young aunt. The first time I met Robert was when Dean brought him back from the arcade. I thought he was really nice and had an outgoing personality. Dean had not knew him long, you know, but after that he became friends with us. I was really close with Ann. She'd had sadness in her life, so it was good to see her smile. I was grateful for that. Robert was able to bring out a part of Ann that I feel like that she had never felt before. He ignited within her something that she didn't know she had within her. And that was the ability to enjoy life. And so my friendship grew between Robert and Ann. And before you know it, they were in love. Life was good. What can I tell you? The three of us were close. Real close. Seeing them so happy made me want to go find someone for myself. So I left Nacogdoches for a while to get some job training in my GED. It was really my first time away from home. I missed Robert and Ann, but it changed my life. It felt like I left a boy and came back a man. And I didn't come back alone. Her name was Janice, and she was the woman of my dreams. Janice was a very nice looking woman. She was uh, really friendly and, you know, really surprised me on some things. You know, she was really an intelligent person and uh, she really fit in, you know. I just say she was a pretty hot woman. Yeah, Janice had a few boyfriends before we met, but she was just perfect for me. I felt like that Dean was really almost mystified with her. 
she kind of had that quality about her that men noticed her. I can see why Dean Allen was attracted to her. I don't know if possibly was his first girlfriend, but he was head over heels in love with her. We were figuring on living together, but under Mama's roof, you play by Mama's rules. Dean's mother preferred them to get married, even though he was 17, because we were raised in the Catholic Church, and it was just her religious beliefs that she just preferred them to get married instead of living together. I was kind of surprised because Dean was only 17 years old, and Janice was well into her 20s. I don't feel like that he was really ready to make that kind of commitment but I think that he felt he was. But he married a woman that had much more maturity on him, and I feel like that really, in the end, was his undoing. We were all young, but so what? You couldn't do any better than Janice. It seemed the best times of our lives were ahead of us. No one see the storm that lay ahead. Dean and I, we loved each other to pieces. We just never figured one of us would end up that way. In my 29 years in law enforcement, I have never seen a case like this where the body was cut up in so many small pieces. first time that our department went into the apartment, we had a crime scene. It was obvious that there was a big blood stain on the rug, about four to five foot in diameter. Eventually, when they lifted the rug, the padding under the rug and the wood in the floor was soaked with blood stains. There were spatters of blood on the living room walls, on the living room drapes. There was flesh particles in the drain of the shower. The killer eventually thought it was to his advantage to cooperate and show us where we could find the body parts, which was found 60 miles from the crime scene another county and a wild life refuge. Sometimes when your friends get married, the friendship loses a little steam. But with us, it was just the opposite. Did you get that? Robert and I have been living together a couple years. So Janice suggested that Robert and I try to go ahead and get married. We'd, you know, been together quite a while then, living together. I was always the life of the party, not exactly the marrying type, but I wanted to make Anne happy. And in a way, I tried to make my best friend happy too. Robert and Dean, they were like brothers as far as I'm concerned. They did everything that they could together. I always remember that Dean never talked about Robert being his uncle once he married Dean's aunt. He would always say Robert was his best friend. I mean, that always remained, was that it was a best friend. But now that we were officially family, I looked at Robert in a different light. And I didn't always like what I was seeing. I'd remind him that he was married to my aunt. He was her husband now, not some party boy. Robert was uh, pretty rough around the edges, and uh, he was more the outgoing party type. You know, he had wandering eyes, really, and you know, he was just really a little bit trashy, I would say. I expected better of Robert. 
and I didn't like being his conscience. After I joined the army, he wouldn't be my problem. Well, at least for a while. Dean enlisted in the army because Dean and Janice was having financial struggles and he needed to try to get some more education and some more training. Dean was really a provider. He did just exceptionally more than most people would do for his family. He always tried to make ends meet no matter what he had to do. Dean and Janice were stationed about 200 miles away in Colleen, Texas. I miss them both but it was a little easier for me without him breathing down my neck. And it gave me a chance to make some new friends and serve the public in my own way. Robert was a butcher by trade, you know, had his own knives and everything, was really proud of his profession and good at it. People valued my skill and my friendly service. Plus, I was making decent money and there were some fringe benefits. I think that Robert had a charismatic side to him that he enjoyed seeing people be pleased by something he was doing. So I think that he really went out of his way to be a people person, which tended to lead him a little bit down the path of maybe being a little too flirtatious. It's all about customer service and keeping up employee morale. Take that college girl who worked the register. I mean, look at her. Grade A Texas prom. Come on, can you blame me? It was pretty much common knowledge among the close-knit group of friends that Robert was possibly stepping out on Anne. Once Anne found out about me and that college girl, things got ugly. We fought a lot. I didn't think our marriage would survive. We talked to Anne all the time. I was furious with Robert when I found out what was going on. I knew he could be a dog, but this was going too far. Then, of all people, Janice called with the perfect solution. When Robert started stepping out on me and we were starting to have struggles in our marriage, Janice suggested we move to Colleen to try to work things out. I loved Anne like a sister, and she was in pain. I welcomed her into our home, along with Robert, even though he was the source of her pain. It's not like I really had a choice in the matter, but I knew I always had options, so I packed my knives and went along with Anne. When Janice and Dean moved to Colleen, and then Robert and Anne followed behind, I think at that point, people were like questioning in their head, like, what is the situation here? You know, because of Robert's past indiscretions. Well, at the time, I believed he wanted to work things out. You know, wanted to reconcile instead of divorcing. To be honest, I wasn't too thrilled to leave Nacogdoches behind. And who were these people to be judging me? But then, you never know what might happen in Colleen. I just kind of question Janice's motives as to why she would even want to bring a troubled couple that's trying to regroup into a situation to where there could possibly be some other problems. <laughs> Living together was a little tough at first. Anne had me on a short leash, and Dean was kind of uptight. Sometimes Robert would pick at Dean about always kind of scurrying around and picking up after people and making sure the house was in order. But he was a neat person, and he was very conscious of making a good impression. Dean was raised to help, 
He was raised to be responsible. It was in Dean's makeup. That was his personality. Out of the bunch, the only one who really got me was Janice. Both of them had a similar personality as far as just being real outgoing and almost bordering on flirtatious to people of the opposite sex. Their friendship was getting a little more closer than I expected, or Dean, either one. At first, I looked forward to having Ann and Robert with us, but now I wasn't so sure. The whole reason we moved was to get away from that chick in the butcher shop. But there was a new temptation in the very next room. As a friend of Robert and Janice, I know that both of them were kind of known to stray, but I never thought that it would be with each other. What's that saying? Out of the frying pan? into the fire. From the moment I met Janice, people try to tell me stuff, but I just ignore them. She was my wife, and I loved her. Dean Allen was very jealous and very protective and apparently very forgiving to his wife that he would keep going after her after she would be going out with other men and cheating on him. Did I ever think it could be Janice and Robert together? Not in a million years. Robert and his wife Ann had moved in with Dean and Janice and uh, they were living in an upstairs apartment. Janice had a babysitting job on the first floor of that house. And she said that she went downstairs to babysit for the night and that Robert came downstairs naked, standing in front of her saying, I know you want me as much as I want you. That's when an affair started. Yeah, Dean was my best friend. And yeah, I was betraying him. But so was Janice, and she was his wife. I think Janice wanted this all along, and why she invited us to live with them in the first place. I was real careful around Anne, but Dean, God bless him, Dean was clueless. I think Dean was, uh blind to the fact that she was flirtatious and all that because he was so in love with that woman she could do no wrong. I mean, anybody in their right mind could see what was going on, but he chose to, I guess, turn the other cheek or close his eyes, but it just, uh, it was there. There was so much time of friendship between Robert and Dean that it came as a total surprise that it would go to that point of betraying not only his friendship with Dean, but his wife. I mean, this was like a tangled web that the players just couldn't get out of. And then we got careless. I know that Ann caught Robert and Janice in the house. She'd gotten off from a babysitting job early and was there at the house and they wouldn't open the door. And so immediately, you know, Ann's intuition took over and she knew that something terribly wrong was going on. Shortly after I suspected Robert and Janice was having an affair, I had told Robert I thought it was just enough, and I wanted to come back to Nacogdoches and work things out and get our jobs back we had here in Nacogdoches. You know, it was either gonna work for us or not. So Ann and I packed up and came back home. Ann didn't say a word to Dean, but it was a wake-up call. 
If I wanted to save the friendship, I'd have to cool it with Janice. So I told myself I was over her, and I believed it. Almost. Years went by, and we led separate lives. But when my armist stint was through, we moved back to Nacogdoches. And brother, was I ever happy to be back home. A lot had changed since we left. Now I had three kids. I was proud of all of them and happy to raise them where I grew up. My family was everything to me. That incident in Colleen, Dean never knew about it. So when he came home, our friendship picked up right where we'd left off. Robert and Dean did a lot of things together that I think made a closer bond for them. In this area, we have what's called shade tree mechanics. They definitely worked on cars a lot. Robert loved cars, and so did Dean. So that was one of the interests that they shared. And it seemed like there was always a time that I would pull up over there at Dean's house, and he'd be under that hood, and there would be Robert right there with him. But if Dean ever found out about me and his wife, then there was gonna be trouble. Well, I didn't think the affair continued. You know, I guess I was pretty much in as much denial as Dean was, you know, because we wanted to believe them so bad. And the thing with Janice, it wasn't over. I did confront Robert about the relationship, and he apologized and said that Janice was, you know, kind of like seducing him. Once I admitted that to Anne, our marriage was over. I left the house, and I told her I was moving back to Wisconsin. But I had other plans. And Janice had plans of her own, too. One day, I came home from work, and she was gone. Later, she called up with a story about going to California to see her brother. Robert and Janice left. Dean did not know where they had gone. Anne, after a few days, came to Dean and said she found out where Robert and Janice were staying. It was very painful when I realized that Janice and Robert had moved in together at one of our friends' home. Dean did not believe her, so Ann took Dean out and showed him where both Robert's car and Janice's car parked by this home. Dean was so obsessed with her. He wasn't gonna believe anything unless he seen with his own eyes what was going on with Robert and Janice. Janice lied to me about going to California. And that hurt bad enough, but not nearly as bad as the truth. I, I just felt like I had to show him so he wouldn't see that his wife was betraying him. I know that Dean felt extremely angry and betrayed that his wife was running around on him, but then to add to the insult, it was his best friend and his uncle. So I feel that he had a double whammy going on there. Now that I've seen it for myself, I knew I had to make a statement. And I was gonna make it with a gun. When Robert got involved with Dean's wife, Dean didn't like it at all, and Robert and Janice moved in a home in the Nacogdoches area. Dean went with a rifle. He pointed the gun at Janice, said, where's Robert? And she said he went to take a shower. He went looking for Robert. I heard the commotion up front and hit the best I could. But when I saw the end of the rifle, I didn't think, I just jumped. Robert came around the corner and grabbed the end of the gun. As he did that, 
A gun went off. My blood was boiling. I, I couldn't think straight, couldn't see straight. Turns out I couldn't shoot straight either. Both of them had a hold of the gun, and neither one would let go. I was bigger than Dean and stronger. He knew he couldn't win the fight. And Robert let Dean go. We were both still alive, but I knew our friendship was dead. It was time to get out of Texas once and for all. I think he was trying to scare them. You know, he just wanted his wife back. Dean scared the hell out of me. He totally lost it. I couldn't risk sticking around. So that is when they started making arrangements to take their stuff and go to Wisconsin, where Robert was originally from. We got out of there fast, me and Janice, and we took Janice and Dean's kids with us. I got a job as a butcher in the local supermarket. We knew Dean would fight to get his family back, just in case he took the law into his own hands like he did before. I'd be ready for him. Dean was devastated when he found out that Robert and Janice had moved to Wisconsin, and especially they took the kids. I was completely panicked. My wife and, and children were a thousand miles away with, with the guy I thought was my best friend. None of it made any sense. He was distraught and just seemed really beside himself. Just emotionally spent is what I would say. Didn't know how to feel because it was not only his wife, but, but his best friend. I mean, how do you deal with something like that and come out on the other side unscathed? It might have ended there, but then my wife started playing a dangerous game. Early part of May of 1990, Janice wrote him a letter. And she told him that she loved him and she hoped that he would take her back and that Robert was not treating her and the children the way they should be treated. Maybe Janice didn't like the weather in Wisconsin. Maybe she wasn't really happy with me. Or maybe she knew what would happen to Dean when he showed up here. Dean had called me on the phone and wanted to know if I could put him a new motor in his Camaro, and I said, yeah, Dean, you know, what's up? He said, well, it's not that good a shape, and I'm going to take a trip. Dean told me that he was going to go to Wisconsin and that he was going to get his wife and kids back and that he was going to take care of Robert permanently. I said, I don't believe you're going to do something like this, and you shouldn't do it. He said, well, come over here. Let me show you what I've got in the trunk of my car. And he raised the trunk of his car, and he had this both saw brand new, the hatchet, the machetes, and a few assorted knives. And I said, Dean, what in the world is wrong with you? You cannot get by with something like this. This is crazy. When Dean told me about his plans to go to Wisconsin and kill Robert, there was no way that I believed that he would actually follow through on it because of Dean's personality, because I knew that he was a caring person, because I knew he loved Robert. And there was no way that I thought that he would ever do that. In fact, his boss said that he just felt he was just blowing off steam, that he didn't think he would ever do that. But eventually, his co-workers started calling him Rambo. I heard it was a big joke around town. But he had a bad habit of pointing guns at me. So I had to keep my edge. On occasion, Robert was known to take his knives home from work. I mean, just like a person would clean their guns or whatever, Robert would do that with his knives. He would keep his knives sharpened, and, you know, 
He made sure that they were ready to go for the next day's work. I let Janice know I was coming to get her, and I set off on a thousand mile drive. But part of me didn't trust her. Like, this might be a trap. So I told her I'd come at eight in the morning. But I got there at four. I had off the next day, so Janice and I were up all night watching movies. The door was unlocked, apparently, and he just walked in with the machete taped to the end of the sawed-off shotgun. And at one point, I look up, and there was Dean. I said to Robert, if you try and stop me, I'm gonna kill you. He was standing in my house with a knife and a gun. Let's be real, he had already made up his mind. <laughs> Robert and Dean got into a tussle. The machete fell off. The gun dropped, and it was just me and him. My hands were around his neck, looking him right in the eyes. I was gasping for air, reaching for his hands, bucking to try and get away. At that time, Janice picked up the machete. I don't think Janice had made up her mind between me and Dean until that very last moment. Janice wasn't surprised to see me in Wisconsin. After all, she'd invited me. Dean came earlier to the apartment than he had told Janice he was gonna come. And Janice said that he apparently didn't fully trust her, that he might be walking into a trap. I pointed the shotgun at Robert. <gasps> but I never expected him to come after me, unarmed. Robert lunged for Dean. They got in a tussle. The machete fell off. Robert Pogue had him down on the floor, choking him. And Janice thought that he was killing Dean Allen. sudden, he just let go. And at that time, she picked up the machete and stabbed him in the back. He loosened his grip. I got up and finished the job. And I told Janice, it's all over. He's dead. As far as Janice Allen stabbing in the back, I don't know if anybody ever will know the real story. They actually used Robert's most prized possession, which was his butcher knives, to actually butcher him. It was a total act of defiance. And we both took care of the body. And after everything that happened, it was important for her to show me we were in this together. Well, I know they cut up his body and put it in four or five garbage bags. Dean said they it cut out his heart, and he said he never did know a human heart was that small. Dean Allen had told people that Janice went with him and helped bury the bags. In fact, threw dirt on top of the bag to show that she loved Dean. Then we went back to Texas. I had my wife and a little something to show off. When he came back, he said, I won, he lost. And uh, he showed his co-workers a trophy he brought back, a ponytail. I think that in Dean's mind, when he was showing off the ponytail, that he had already 
gone off the deep end as far as thinking of what the consequences were gonna be for his actions. I think he was so caught up in the situation that he almost felt bulletproof. I wasn't all that surprised when the Wisconsin police showed up a few days later. It turned out it was Janice who tipped off the cops that I killed Robert. That didn't really surprise me either. Janice Allen testified in Dean Allen's trial that she was the one that stabbed Robert Pope. So she was charged at that point with second degree intentional homicide and received 27 years in prison on a plea bargain. I think justice was served. I firmly believe that Janice Allen was as much at fault as Dean Allen, but right to the end, Dean Allen protected her. It was devastating to me to see two lives just completely destroyed, one dead and the other the rest of his life in the pen. Dean and Robert were good people. Neither one of them intended to hurt anybody but it happened. I know I hurt a lot of people. I just wish I had a chance to tell them all I was sorry. I guess uh, I just, uh, it saddens me because I miss Dean and Robert. Um, both.